So hello, welcome. This is a video about a, a referral I received for a an upper left three or an upper left canine which was highly sclerosed and the referring dentist to try to access the tooth but couldn't quite find where the uh, where the canal was. So um, in cases like these, we uh, we 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 first start off without rubber dam okay and um, so so here, here I'm just taking out the temporary dressing and um, the reason why we uh, we do things without rubber dam in the first place is that we want to sort of look at where the, the sort of tooth is um, is angulated so usually when you put a rubber dam over the tooth you can only just see the crown and it's really really difficult to uh, to, to work out in what plane um, is should we uh, access uh, the tooth so as you can see here I'm having a little look at the the outside of the tooth and I'm also seeing where the the access cavity as well is so here I'm just gonna do the orientation I'm using a DG 16 endodontic probe to visualize where we should go so the blue lines is where the um, where the where the root is going and the green line is really where sh we should be angulating our drill or ultrasonics um, I'm now angulating the DG probe um, to where the access was and as you can see um, the, the if, if we kept on going we could have perforated so that's really, really important. So just having a having a really, really good look at where I'm going to be putting um, my drill or ultrasonics. So the first attempt is always just a cheeky little get a drill down there and see if it drops in. So I'm just going to angulate the drill at the, the correct angulation just to see if um, if 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 we can find the canal easily, and in this case, I, I noticed that there was still a little bit of the temporary crown, um, the temporary filling material around the our margins of the access. So I've just given that a little bit of a clean up. So the, um, the fast hand piece hasn't worked, okay, and I could continue to use a fast hand piece, but in the end it, it blocks the, um, the access cavity too much for me to see properly. So in this case I'm using a succession of uh, ultrasonic tips, so I'm using some endodontic tips and I'm also using a, just a normal uh, ultrasonic tip with water, and it's at this point I think to myself, I think I found it. Found it straight away. Fantastic. There's like a tiny little hole there, and um, and in fact, at this point, I think, well, I've probably found it. I'm going to get the rubber dam on. Um, so I put the rubber dam on, and then I use a size 10 K file to have a little look, and in fact, I haven't found it. So this this is more than likely the um, the energy created by the ultrasonic tip has create like a little dip in the uh, in the access cavity, and this this isn't the canal accessed successfully yet. So again, I'm going to use my ultrasonics. Also as well, what you'll notice is I need to use paper points. Um, using a three-in-one tip so far down the access cavity, um, there's still a little bit of a pool of water, and you still can't see. So I'll be using, um, uh, you know, ultrasonics, still checking orientation as well. So in this case, I I can look at the X-ray, I can kind of sort of work out exactly how far down I should be, and I'm putting a little bit of a point on my DG16 endodontic probe just to see if I'm in the right area or the right depth. And again, just really, really slowly and judiciously just checking your access, checking how deep it is, using a little bit of ultrasonics. Um, if you've done a CBCT, which I haven't in this case, I didn't think it was um, uh, recommended, um, you can um, take a, 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 a 
a really, really accurate measurement of how deep you should go, and that could be helpful. So now um, I am using a fine pointed ultrasonic endo burr, and, and as I was vibrating it, I felt something, I felt something, something drop in. And now I'm sort of having a little poke here and I can, I think I've found it. I think I've pretty much found it. I'm, I'm in the right sort of area. I can feel like a little drop. And as you can just see right there, you can see the, uh, the exposure of the canal. So this is the moment of truth. I'm gonna get another size 10k file and I'm gonna try and stick it in the hole. And as you can see, when a, a file goes into a hole and you let go, you get that nice old twang effect of the canal. So straight away I'm using some 2% um, sodium hypochlorite. And, and I'm gonna use a Hyflex glide path file I absolutely love these files these are files are fantastic um, usually I'd use a size 10k file to just negotiate first but in this case um, uh, I felt like the canal was large enough for the glide path file straight away I'm still gonna recapitulate with a size 10 file meaning I'm using that size 10k file to remove any of the debris so it doesn't get stuck down there and you know, final shaping with a high flex one file. I have um, condensed this appointment right down so that the um, the, the video is only 17 minutes long. But the appointment actually was was two hours, and my shaping protocol probably has a few more steps. But I've just cut it out just to make it more watchable. Again, more recapitulation, lots of irrigation. So I'm going to use a matched cone here, and um, and I'm going to I'm going to place it to length, and I'm going to confirm tug back. Uh, tug back is really really important, and actually I'm going to um, link a, a video just in the top corner there. This is just um, a a video on how important tug back is. Um, you want to make sure that the the end of the GP point is the same diameter or you know it fits the apical constriction and that's really important for obturation. And now uh, my final step or one of my final steps is ultrasonic activation um, of the sodium hypochlorite. Some people do this throughout the appointment but me personally I just do it right at the end. Um, so I'm activating the sodium hypochlorite and we can see here uh, the canal. You noticed I haven't done a final wash with EDTA. In this case, I am actually using um, something called HEDP, which is a trigenate, which is a very, very mild chelator that you add to sodium hypochlorite. And I'm drying the, uh, the canal with paper points. So I'm um, applying uh, a, a bioceramic sealer directly into the canal space using some uh, these things called visco tips, and these tips are uh, these these are these are perfect. They've got like a kind of a, like a sleeve on the end that can sort of um, get down the canal. Um, I would suggest though, if you don't have a microscope, it, it's risky business doing it without really really good magnification because you can really squirt a lot of um, bioceramic out in this case. Uh, in this particular case, if I'm being really cruel to myself, I suppose that I used a little bit too much uh, bioceramic in the wrong part of the canal. Maybe I should have pushed it a bit further down. And now I'm just burning off the access with the uh, with the heated plugger. I've got a B and L heated plugger. And now I'm compacting the uh, the GP down with a size. 3-4 Mac 2 plugger. I used to be really, really um, uh, cautious when compacting down GP, but now I really go for it, especially if I know that I've got um, tug back and I know my GP point fits the constriction at the right area. I'm not concerned about me pushing the, the obturation material through the apex. And again, um, 
washing away the uh, by ceramic with um, I had a little bit of um, sodium hypochlorite left in my in my syringe and then we're etching bonding sorry we are etching first and then I'm using a resin modified G uh, gl glass armor to place a cap over the top of the GP um, and this chem I believe this chemically bonds to the tooth structure itself so if the um, so I'm, I'm I'm using a um, an acidose tip here. So it's it's like a it's like a it's like a tip that you can load with GP, put a little bung in it, and then get a, uh, a composite gun to to place it in the in the right place. Um, I, I think the Resmi GI um, bonds to the tooth surface. So if the overlying tooth uh, restoration, the composite fails, well at least you've got that sort of second uh, second line of defence against the root canal then becoming infected and there you go all completed um thanks for watching if you have any questions at all or you have any criticisms of this video you'd like to just ask a question or you know you want to have a conversation put it in the comments and, and i will guarantee that i will message you back and we'll have a nice discussion about things have a nice day